everybody. It is Monday, June 4th, and uh, we've got some garbage to talk about. This one is uh, about the least fun slate we will have um, anytime soon, that's for sure. Uh, four games, one team clearly above the rest. Pitching is, I don't know, awful. I guess is probably the best way to describe it. It's just going to be a blast. Needless to say, I'm playing with abundance today. Jake, how was your weekend? The weekend was good. I uh, did not play on Sunday, which is nice. Nice. Came back refreshed last night, started looking at stuff today and realized there were four games. And uh, just easing, easing back into the week with a four-game slate. So, uh, yeah, pitching is weird, and that's where I start. Everything starts with pitching for me. Um, so it wasn't that fun trying to dig into some of these guys. Uh, there's two guys that I like, and then everyone else is just sort of a tier below after that. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a weird slate. Ownership is gonna be important. Yeah, I don't. Um, I got nothing interesting. Let's just dive into this. <laughs> uh, first game up, the one that matters the most: Yankees and Tigers. Uh, Yankees, five point six run implied total. Tigers, four point one. It's a 65% chance to win for the Yankees. Domingo Herman going for New York. Mike Fires going for Detroit. Um, the Yankees will be, without question, the number one stack. You can tell by all the purple that I've got on here. Uh, and I think Dom Domingo Herman is probably the best pitching option of the day, or at least close to it. He's 6,600 on FanDuel, so he's definitely my favorite option on FanDuel. Uh, I can make a case for Trapiano over Herman on uh, DK, where Trapiano's slightly cheaper, but I'm going to have just overwhelming amounts of Herman, and oddly enough, uh, Mike Fires is one of two guys that I will basically have no exposure to today, so I don't know. What do you see in Herman today? Yeah, he's my favorite pitcher, I think, on the slate, point per dollar on both sites, and it's just, so for me, for four-game slates, like, you need the probably two out of the top three raw point scoring pitchers to compete in any tournament. Um, I just think he has such a good chance to be a top two pitcher. Like he's just got crazy upside, striking out over thirty percent of righties. He's going to get five or six tiger righties in this lineup. It looks like um, just so talented. And then the Tigers have been pretty bad against righties. An eighty nine WRC plus. 139 ISO, 311 on base percentage against righties over the last month. So it's just, I just have a hard time seeing him not rack up a bunch of strikeouts. And I'm not all that concerned about him giving up a couple runs. I think, I don't think he's going to throw a shutout or anything. But just the strikeout upside is so high for this guy. He struck out nine Indians in his first start. That is, like, he could easily do the same thing against the Tigers. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I love him. Uh, I've got him projected with the second most points uh, on DK. He's a he's actually a full point behind Trapiano, but I mean I love I love these guys at that price point. Are yeah. you gonna get to fires at all? No, I don't think so. Just I'll probably he's force had a in like you know two percent just in case. I'm over right. Happy about it. If he if he had done a better job missing bats lately, like he doesn't have a slider, which is the pitch you kind of need for Judge and Stanton and Sanchez, and that really worries me. He throws his changeup a lot against righties. That could be big trouble against these guys. Um, gives a bunch of hard contact to both sides. It's just too tough of a spot, and I. Like, if he was the same price and in the same matchup and you knew the Yankees were going to be super highly owned and I thought he could maybe get a few strikeouts and get lucky with some quality contact, then I would say, yeah, he's a fine leverage pitcher. But it's just – I think it's just too tough for me today. So I'll pass on the fires. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. All right, here's a weird question for you. What would you say the chances are that Mike Fires is one of the top two scoring pitchers on the day? Um, top two, top two. 
Yeah. So up there with Herman, Godley, Tropiano, whatever, Teron. Uh, is honestly, that 5%? Is that too low or too high? It's probably a little too low. Okay. I was thinking like somewhere in the 5 to 10%, but I don't know. That's that's an interesting question. I think it's low for sure. And I think he, like he's got one of the lower chances. I think I would put like Teron above him, Richard, Godley, I'd put Tropiano. Above him. Yeah, and pro- like I'd probably put him above Holland. I think. I think Holland's been pretty bad. So. Uh, well, I, I have astronomical amounts of Holland, but we'll get there. Um, <laughs> we'll right, get- put it put it this way. Uh, what do you think is higher, Fire's ownership or his chances of being one of the top two scoring pitchers? Yeah, that's the thing. Like he, we've seen it happen before, where like the chalk stack ends up being the opposing pitcher ends up being the play you need or whatever at low ownership. I think he'll be like under 5% owned in, at least in some of the big, the higher dollar tournaments. Okay. Just because people are going to, the Yankees are going to be crazy owned in those. Yeah. So on a four game slate, you get a starting pitcher, no pitch count or anything. It could happen. I just, I'm not, I don't have a lot of faith in fires. If he's under 5% owned, I definitely think I want to have lines of him because I think that's too low because I think his odds of being in the top two purely out of just random chance uh, would be higher than that. So I want to see that. I don't know uh, which article Alex is doing today. If he's doing pitchers or lineup card or whatever the hell else we call those things. I hope he's doing the pitcher. (laughs) Me too. So then we can see where he's at on these because That'd be interesting. Yeah. Just like the way that he popped up and, you know, I got zero of him when I ran it. The way that he popped up and then, like, getting to thinking about sort of the logistics of it all. I wonder how wrong I am and how much I should actually try to force in just from a a game theory perspective. You don't get this kind of conversation everywhere, people. Alex made me smarter. (laughs) Okay, so what about Tiger's bats here? I'm playing a ton of Herman. Uh, but, they're my sixth most owned stack on FanDuel and seventh on DK, just for reference. Keep going. Yes, I just w- probably want to cherry pick a couple of bats. Herman is going to be pretty chalky, right? Yeah, I, w- I mean, I would assume he'll be the most owned pitcher. Yeah. So, I mean, Miguel Cabrera, Castellanos, both just good hitters. Um, I think Leonis Martin makes some sense. So those top three is really where I would go for the Tigers if I'm stacking against Herman, which I don't think is the worst idea. He just gives up a ton of hard hits. And if he, if his stuff isn't breaking like it's supposed to, you can have a lot of trouble in this park. So there's like a path to a Tiger stack being a very good stack here. So I don't want to make it seem like Herman's invincible because I don't think he is. Um, certainly some downside to playing him. I'll have some lines of Martin Castellanos, Cabrera, and Candelario. Uh, the problem Perfect. is it just falls off a cliff after that. Goodrum and Hicks and Jones and Iglesias are not very good hitters. Um, not a great matchup for them either. I don't really have much exposure out like after Candelario. So I'll have some Tigers. Um, I think by the time I get closer to lock, I'll probably force in... <sighs> Somewhere in the five to seven percent range of fires. Okay. I'm slowly talking myself into the logistics of this from a slate perspective. If you have 150 lineups, you you can get a, a, over the field on a lot of guys. So. I mean, I want to have like 10 to 15, probably like 10 lineups of fires. Then. 100. So what is that? 150. Or something like that. Seven and a half percent, right? Yeah. Uh, six and two thirds. 10 of 150. Oh, yeah, sorry. 6 with 6. Yeah. I mean, okay. you don't, we don't have to do math in our heads. Calculators are everywhere now. I know. I forget All about that. the teachers that were like, you're never going to be able to carry a calculator around in your pocket. It's like, bitch, you're wrong. <laughs> carry one around every day. Hell, my watch is a calculator. I've got two yeah. on me at all times. Me too. So, yeah, you guys were wrong. I have a calculator always. I don't need to do math anymore. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I guess we don't really have to touch on the Yankee stack all that much. Uh, everybody's in play. Um, yeah, just, I mean, just, I don't like just, Torres. Yeah, so I don't mind Torres. I mean, if that price is going to get him to be lower owned, we still know he's a good hitter. He might miss out on extra at bat. 
in the bottom of the eighth or whatever if they get to the ninth. Uh, so there's downside playing a guy at, at ninth at that price, but it's just everyone in this stack makes sense. If I had to pick one guy, it'd probably be Judge. But Greg Bird for 4000 batting in the middle of, of Judge and Stan- Sanchez or uh, Stanton, um, it's just great all around. I don't know. There's not much to say. No, they're all spectacular. Uh, I get tons of everyone up to Torres, but Torres at 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK uh, as a nine-hole hitter. I just have a lot of trouble getting there. It's it's purely price and position in the lineup for me. Uh, I know that he's been raking. I know that he went on a ridiculous streak of home runs, but um, just a... I just can't get there for, for those prices. I hope that he moves to fifth or sixth. Well, sixth, I guess. He batted fifth a couple games, I think. <laughs> it's, it's only two, actually. I checked it out. He batted fifth once and sixth once. Okay. And it's all been nine smattered around there. At least, I think that's what I read. Anyway, that's enough of Sounds the right. only game that's interesting. Royals and Angels. Royals, 3.5 run implied total. Angels, 4.7. It's a 63% chance to win for the Angels. Danny Duffy going for KC. Nick Trapiano going for uh, the Angels. I mean, Trapiano's my dude today. Uh, I think he probably grades out a little bit better than Herman on DK. Uh, I'd rather have Herman on FanDuel. Trapiano's $1,400 more expensive than him. But I'm going to have boatloads of Trapiano on both sites. And uh, similar to Fires, I get essentially no Duffy. And I'm starting to talk myself into a scenario where uh, I have a little bit more Duffy than I would have expected, depending on what our ownership looks like. Yeah. Uh, So for Tropiano, I think he's my favorite out of those top four price pitchers to stack against from doing a leverage stack. I think he's been a little bit lucky with the like his quality of contact compared to his BABIP and all that. And the Royals don't have a ton of power. I wish they had more, but Merrifield, Moustakis, Salvador Perez, and Soler do. And even Hunter Dozier, I don't mind. Um, so just the hard contact is scaring me a little bit for Tropiano. That's why I have Godley and Herman above him. But uh, I don't. he doesn't have the same kind of strikeout upside, especially not in this matchup against the Royals, who just seem to put the ball in play really well. Um, so I get, the, I get the Tropiano play. I'll probably have a bunch of him, but I'll be well over the field or under the field. Sorry. Uh, I have Tropiano projected for the most Ks today. Really? Uh, well, he's in a relative tie with Erman. Yeah. I'd, I would take Erman godly. I mean, I, I can't fight you on it. I get I, <laughs> like, it's just such a weird slate with not that great of pitching that if he's going to be significantly lower than Herman in the same price range, I don't know. I mean, why not take the lower owned one, I guess. Right. Um, yeah. I'm going to end up with a ton of Trapiano and then, uh, based on our ownership projections, that'll let me know how I want to maneuver on fires and Duffy, but I'm starting to put that plan together. Uh, Angel's stack is my number two on both sites, but it's kind of weird for me. It's basically all Kinsler, Trout, and Upton. Uh, Pujols is great on FanDuel. He's only 2,700, so I'm cool there. And then Andrelton Simmons is like half of those main guys on both sites. But like, I I was surprised I got so much ownership and got them to second with 75% of it just being Kinsler, Trout, and Upton. But I love those dudes. Duffy has a, an 18.4% K rate, almost five walks for nine, 543 XFIP, 40% hard contact against righties this year. And good. then, no, no. And he'll get nine, right? Is that what you have? Nine righties? Eight. Is Yo Otani in there? Yeah. Okay. I don't see him in mind, but if he's in there, even better. I'll use Otani against Duffy. No Yo, issue with that. Let me check it. Um, I didn't update either. it this morning, so this is from whatever I had last night. Yeah, either way. I mean, so Trout, obviously, Upton. It's um, I like Angelton Simmons a lot. I think more than you, probably. Uh, Cozart, 
Jeffrey Marte has some power, although I don't think he's really shown it this year. Like, Angels, definitely a top three stack for me up there with the Yankees. If they're going to be lower owned, then I'll gladly have more Angels than the Yankees and take my chances there. But just another awesome stack. Duffy's been pretty bad against righties. Yeah, I didn't have Cozart in there. Um, and now that I had, now that I oh. see him and see his price, um, that'll be some more ownership. So that'll uh, that'll look good for the Angels. Yeah, I love Cozart. Forty-one yeah. percent hard contact, only striking out eleven percent of the time. Um, he just looks like a pretty decent hitter against lefties this year. Dual eligibility too, so yeah. like you can kind of get unique and leave Kinsler out and put him in at second if you want, or have him and Kinsler together. Uh, I think that looks nice. Um, that'll be good. Yeah, uh, the, whatever lineups I have in here were the lineups that I put in here uh, before I did the night shift last night. So, And there were four games today. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't care if I had Otani or Cozart in here right now. It uh, <laughs> doesn't make all that much of a difference. Not, but... at, not at 9 o'clock in the morning, it doesn't. Yeah. Especially when the Angels were still my number two stack. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll work through that Cozart-Otani mess by 6 o'clock tonight, I promise. <laughs> Uh, are you good on that game? Uh, I guess we should uh, yeah. probably touch a little bit on the Royals. Uh, I love Moose Tacos as a one-off option on DK. I got 35% of him <laughs> on my first run through. Now that is not what I will end up with because that'll be significantly above whatever the hell we're projecting him at, I would imagine. Uh, so I'll shave some off of that, but man, he grades out really nicely today. Yeah, he's the main one that I like, but Salvador Perez is not far behind. Uh, I try Chopiano. to catchers when I talk. Oh, yeah, because you play on Fandle and stuff. Well, no, not even that. It's just <clears> like, <throat> I don't know, like every catcher is sort of in play for me in some way. Like Salvador Perez is just kind of like permanently a catcher option for me because yeah. he can hit. So just like, a good hitter. Yeah. yeah, like if you need a catcher, there are so many bad catchers out there that Salvador Perez kind of wins by default a lot. Yeah, so I I mean, I like the Royals stack, like I mentioned, down to Dozier, I think. Just 2900 cheap, you'll be quite different, and it's leverage off Tropiano. So um, these guys all look like they're pretty decent against righties as far as hard contact. Dozier does strike out a lot, but yes, he does. still makes really good contact. And um, other than that, they don't really strike out that much. Solaire a little bit, but it looks like he's been better than... He has been in past years, so I, yeah, I'm on the Royal stack for sure. Yeah, I got. I didn't get to. I don't get to Dozier. All of my exposure is in John Jay, Merrifield, Mustakos, Perez, and Solaire. The Royals are actually my number four stack on DK, so I guess I should have probably talked about them a little bit more. Yeah, and most of that is Mustako. So <laughs> I think that's where they are for me. They're either three or four, I think, for me. <laughs> you can hear my dog snoring on my couch. Uh, Braves and Padres. Braves 3.7 run implied total. Padres 4. It's a 54% chance to win for the Padres. Julio Tehran going for Atlanta. Uh, Clayton Richard going for San Diego. Um, my boy Clayton popping up quite a bit on DK. 6,200. Um, I don't. I don't generally like him. But I think I'm going to end up with a bunch of them, which terrifies me because the Braves have, Braves have been nuking left-handed pitching this year. Uh, and then Tehran, I don't know what to make of him, man. 9,800 on, on DK is just, he's way too expensive. But I still get, like, you know, I'll have him in like a quarter of my lineups, which I'm not happy about. But what else am I going to do? Padres' bats are just so bad. I, yeah, I, don't know I mean, what this game. Tehran's been pretty bad against lefties, so I wonder what kind of lineup the Padres will roll out if they have other lefties. But I like Galvis a lot for 2,700, just some stolen base upside against Tehran. And it looks like he's been hitting righties pretty well this year. Hosmer, same thing, Jankowski. So if you want to cherry pick some lefties against Tehran, I don't think that's a bad idea. Um, People would just see the Padres matchup and probably plug in Tehran just because um, and see that run total. Um, I don't know. He's not my favorite to stack against. I'd rather stack against Tropiano, but uh, no problem with the Padres hitters. I'm not all that high on Tehran. 
I much prefer Godley <laughs> and Hermann over him. So it's going to be tough for me to get away from that pairing tonight. Um, yeah, I prefer Tehran to Godley just because of his price. But I don't know. I mean, Hermann is like, he's on a different level for me today. Yeah. Um, I don't mind Padres bats. They're my fifth stack on FanDuel, sixth on DK. Like, Jankowski and Hosmer both look good. Um, Villanueva's got some pop, so it's, I'm willing to take a chance there. But they look a little bit better on FanDuel than they do on DK. Surprisingly, or I guess maybe to some people, unsurprisingly, the Braves are my worst stack on both sites. What? Yeah. Dead last what? on both of them. Why? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the 3.7 run implied total certainly isn't helping. Is it because of their prices, like Freeman and Albies? Uh, and Albies is the only guy that I get to with any sort of, uh, like, allotment. I've got 5% Albies on FanDuel and 9% on DK. A lot of that is just because of it being, you know, second base. But, like, I can't imagine, like, I'm, I, I, I'm just not getting to a one-off. <clears throat> Freddie Freeman in this scenario. Uh, like, Inciarte is 4200 on DK. That's too expensive. Mm. Marcakis is... I mean, he rarely grades out well for me because I think he sucks. And all these guys are... It's lefty-lefty matchup, so that's not helping. Inciarte, Freeman, and Marcakis aren't great against lefties. And then you're getting into other bats that you need to use, like Camargo, who's been good, but Camargo, Culberson, and then, you know, Swanson's just... Swanson's been good. Yeah, yeah like, that's, that's the problem. So. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, so you kind of mentioned the guys that I like Swanson, Camargo. Um, I love Flowers for 3,800. I hope people don't play him. He's just been mashing lefties this year. I love Albies. Richard just has a really tough time with contact against righties. And um, the Braves have been one of the best teams in the MLB against lefties this year, so... Yeah, I don't know what to believe in this one. I'm, I'm tied up. I, I like the Braves stack. I like it better than using Richard. And I don't... Like, so who's going to be the most popular pitcher in the Richard, Holland, Duffy territory? Because there's clearly four starting pitchers that people are going to use, and then one of these guys is going to emerge as the SP2 kind of chalk. Um, Will be Holland? I have overwhelming amounts of Richard in Holland. Yeah. So it's not going to be Duffy then, right? It'll be... I, I don't see it. I, I mean, for me, it's Holland. I've got him projected a tenth of a point higher than Richard and, you know, $600 cheaper. We'll see how that actually shakes out. It might look a little different if I forced in, like, five percent of fires and duffy i don't know how it would maneuver those guys i guess we, that's something okay. we could look at um hell, let me do that right now and then we'll look at it after we're finished the last game so i just want to be way underweight on who, either richard or holland um i think richard's a better pitcher than holland so if ownership was the same i would i would gladly take some richard and just have zero <laughs> holland or something but um yeah, it'll be interesting to see where these guys are falling in our ownership projections as the day goes on. I'm going to force Duffy and Fires into 6% lines. Okay. And then we'll take a look at how that shakes out. Because I, I think that's probably in the area of where they'll end up being. And if they're anything, you know, significantly higher than that, I, I won't be following along. So Let's do this. 6% Fires. Six percent fires, six percent Duffy. Let's see what that looks like. Lucky for us, there's only four games, so uh, this crunch will go through in uh, like ten seconds. Yeah. Because when it's fifteen games, it's like I'll start this at the beginning of the show and get it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> there's a hundred and fifty. Crunch DraftKings. See how that impacts those two guys. Uh, 
Still not give me any fires. Did I click too many times? Yeah, no fires. It, it must really hate fires. I'm gonna have to up his. I'm gonna have to manually change his projection. I figured three <clears throat> thumbs up would force that high enough. It's still not high enough. So let me force him into twenty fantasy points or something. Oh, he's gonna come up everywhere if you give him twenty. No, I max their exposure at six percent. Okay. I thought the three thumbs up would get them to six pretty easily, but I can't even say that I like fires more than anyone else and still get him. <laughs> That's how bad he looks for me. Maybe I, maybe I should just trust my data. Maybe, maybe I should think about that for right now. Like I could see fires going five or six innings, but having like two strikeouts. I don't think he's going to break the slate, even if the Yankees bats flop. Didn't he used you know to saying? have good stuff? Yeah, and he, I think, as like recently as last year, um, there was a stretch where he goes through the stretch like every year where he just makes a ton of guys miss like four or five games, and then he just goes back to being Mike Fires. Right, so it's I weird. Them. I don't know. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, nothing really changed. So I forced them both to 6%. Uh, Erman and Trapiano are both at 40, and then Richard and Holland are both at 33. So. Mm. And I've got um two to one Tehran to Godly. All right. Wow, man, that's crazy. So yeah, I I think that Richard and Holland are both going to have some heavy heavy ownership. I look at them as relatively similar. So uh, if one of them is significantly higher than the other, I'll be the inverse. That's. I mean, that's how I would go. Zig Waller, Zag, right? So. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have anything more to talk about on the Braves Padres? No, I didn't have anything really to begin with. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I like the Braves stack. Padres, I have interest in the stack a little bit more mini stacks than anything. I don't. I will end up with almost no Braves. So if they pop off, you can assume that I uh, lost a bunch of money. <laughs> Diamondbacks and Giants final game. Diamondbacks 3.8 run implied total. Giants four. Uh, 53% chance to win for the Giants. Zach Godley for Arizona. Derek Holland for San Francisco. Uh, I think I've probably tugged off Holland enough so far, but I really like him at 5,600. And uh, Godley is, I mean, probably my least favorite play of the day just because of his price. Like, I've, like you know, he's good and has good stuff. But I'm not going to be having a ton of him. I actually only got 1% of him on FanDuel. And he's only 8,500. He's just, like, everybody else is better to me. Godly will be the guy that I'm significantly under on. There's no way he's only 13% on DK when this comes out. And he's no. certainly going to be higher than 1% on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, so the thing with Godly this year, at least, you just sort of never know if he's if he's got it. And he's, I probably watched him more than any pitcher this year, and it's really frustrating to watch him because he just has these 30-pitch innings, 30-pitch first innings, and then he'll go nine pitches next inning with two strikeouts. And he's like The key for him is getting ahead of guys, and people are laying off that curveball that he throws. He's got this really awesome curveball, and people are laying off of it when he's not ahead. Um so I don't know what's really going on with him, but the Giants are third in the MLB in first pitch strike rate over the last month, which is encouraging. And if he's able to get ahead, um, he's he's got great stuff to put these guys away. Even, well, Buster Posey's hard to strike out, but like Longoria and Crawford and uh, certainly Sandoval and Williamson and Hernandez. And that's kind of what's getting me to really love godly is the bottom of that giants lineup just not scary at all if you got the pitcher spot in there um and i just think godly is still really good and he's just still capable of having really good starts like his last one so i'll have a ton of godly um could blow up in my face but he's my sp2 tonight or i guess sp1 price but uh, <laughs> yeah, herman crazy. first then godly yeah you don't see that all that often. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's. I'll be underweight on him, so I will be cheering 
I guess, against Godly, but I also have a ton of Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. Diamondbacks are my third stack on both sites, and it's mostly just price, and it's mostly just the top three guys. Uh, Giants are fourth on FanDuel, just slightly behind them, so I'm oddly more on the hitting in this game. I, I don't know. The slate is just spinning my head. So Dyson, Nick Ahmed, and Goldschmidt, I'm like maxing out on. I assume that I'll be way above the field on that, or at least on Dyson and Ahmed. I mean, Goldschmidt's going to be popular. And that's Goldschmidt, I guess, is probably the reason I don't get to a lot of Freddie Freeman. That, that makes sense. I get that. So it'll be, I, I want to see what Goldschmidt's ownership is because if his is like. I don't know, 20 or something, then I'll be able to go to a little bit of Freeman. Give Goldschmidt okay. a bit of a haircut. I don't see them as like appreciably different. Uh, they're just expensive first base options. Um, yeah. But yeah, those top three guys for me. I mean, Dyson's 2,300, Ahmed's 2,400. I don't think they're any good, but they're hitting first and second, and they're, they have like no price point. So it allows me to get way more Yankees in. Yeah, I think the Diamondbacks would be chalk if this was a different park, even like a, a neutral hitting park. So I love everything outside of the park, and you're getting a discount on most of these guys. Goldschmidt, 4,800, and then everyone else is below 4,000. The Diamondbacks have the second best WRC plus against lefties over the last month, which I was really surprised to see. Um, best ISO in that span as well. So showing a lot of power. Um, I, I don't know. They've just been really good against lefties, as bad as they've been against righties. Yeah. So Park sucks, but Goldschmidt and Murphy are my favorites. Murphy's been smashing lefties this year. Fifty-seven percent. Yeah. Fifty-seven percent hard contact, striking out below league average. Um, you're a four hundred ISO. Small sample for him, but uh, that's still pretty crazy. Um, it's really Ahmed, Goldschmidt, Murphy. Uh, I like Kettle Marte even. I like Marrero a little bit in the context of a stack, so I'll have a bunch of Arizona bats. Um, I I think they're a really awesome play against Holland. Yeah, it's these are just it's weird. It's it's hard to talk about Holland and then be like, ah, oh, man, I like the Diamondback stack, but it's just like wherever I have Holland, I won't have Diamondbacks, and wherever I have Diamondbacks, I won't have Holland. So like, I'm just I'm all over the game. 21 mile an hour per win or mile per hour wind blowing dead center uh, is a little 21. higher in San Francisco than it normally is. So I think that 10, does yeah. interest me a little bit. Yeah, like 10 to 15 is usually the standard. Yeah, 21's healthy. That's yeah. That'll be something I'll want to keep an eye on. Because if it's still in that area closer to game time, um, I might like Holland. That, that might make me lean towards Richard a little bit more at that mm -hmm. price point and a little bit more towards Diamondbacks bats. And Giants bats to an extent. Like I said, Giants are fourth for me on FanDuel. I get a ton of Panic, a ton of McCutcheon on FanDuel at least, a ton of Posey on DK. Is he my best catcher option on DraftKings today? I like Posey. Let me see. No, Gary Sanchez, obviously. Jesus. Yeah. I should have known that before I even said anything. Posey's second, though. <laughs> zero nine fantasy points ahead of uh, Salvador Perez. So. Flip a coin, people. Yeah. I like the Giants. Uh, I like uh, I like Panda. I like a little bit of Longoria. Brandon Crawford on FanDuel, 3,300 for a shortstop. So I'll get to a decent amount of Giants. The, this game will be really interesting for me on FanDuel because I'll have almost no Godly and a ton of Giants. So if that breaks well, I'd guess that I'll be, I'll have a really nice shot in a tournament on FanDuel. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with Posey and McCutcheon, just two good hitters. Um, if Godly makes a mistake, I think those are the guys that are most likely to make him pay for it, even in that in that huge park. So that'll be the extent of my Giants exposure, I think. Just Posey and McCutcheon. I get that. I get that. Their price is a lot better on FanDuel. Mm -hmm. That's a panic. Why don't 
Joe Panic on DK. His FanDuel price is the same. Um, That's an interesting quirk. Is it because of Cozart? And uh, I guess he's significantly cheaper. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not so sure. I don't know. All right, that's it, people. Those are that's everything. We've probably gone 15 minutes longer than we ever should have. Um, give me your two pitchers for right now, and we'll take a quick look at some DK crunches. Let's try my two favorites, Godley and Domingo. I get two lines of the 150 for those two. That's how little I like Godley tonight. These are the nuts right here. Uh, it's a Diamondback stack in both of them. One off Padres with a one off Inciarte and Moose Tacos. I don't like those. Uh, I like them better than you. I don't like Dyson. I mean, I think I just, I rarely play Dyson, but other than that, I think that the one on the right is pretty good. All right. So who would you want, like, if you were going to have one team that you stacked up and filled up the rest with, like, one offs and stuff, what would be the team you'd look to do here? With Erman and Godley, um, just looking at price, it would probably be the Angels. I think the Angels would fit okay. I'm pretty gonna, well. Uh, lock in Erman and Godley, and then force an Angel stack to see what they look like. Okay. Look at yeah, 20, I mean, twenty lines with an Angel stack, and then whatever. Oop, only get eleven of them, so that's fine. Probably didn't need as many unique guys, but all right, let's sort that by projected. Ooh, so Gary Sanchez, Stanton, Kettle Marte, and David Peralta with Pujols, Kinsler, Marte, and Justin Upton. That's uh, that's a pretty powerful line. Yeah, that's looks pretty good. Besides Peralta against the lefty, I don't want to take lefties against Holland. I should have mentioned that. So, and you'd have. 3,700 to fill in another one-off outfielder if you wanted to. So just for sake of argument, let's look at what that would be. So an outfielder on DraftKings under 3,700 would be... All right, so you could slot McCutcheon in there. Martin's fine. Well, not against Herman, but... Yeah, so let's, let's do that. Let's swap in. Is that just update or no? Never tried. Yeah, that does work. Oh, there that, we go. That's really fun. Thanks. Thanks, Fantasy Cruncher. Yeah, so. <laughs> Sanchez and Stanton. McCutcheon. Well, you wouldn't want Godley against McCutcheon, but I, uh, I get, I get your point. point. Uh, that's, yeah. So that's why he didn't come up. That makes sense. So, like, Perella or someone in there. I mean, no, no issue with that, but. There you go. Perella, Stanton, Sanchez, and Kettle Marte. Get to a better shortstop. You could get to Galvis. I like Galvis better than Marte, I think. All right, and that gives you a, you know, two double, two two-man stacks, Sanchez and Stanton, Galvis and Perella with a four-man angel stamp, stack, Godley and Herman. It's a nice lineup. Yeah. I forgot that you could, like, swap people out and make it look better. That's, uh, I need to use that more. Good old fantasy cruncher. Yeah. Can you do a bulk swap? I guess you probably can't. They need to add that. If I have my let's like if I had my crunch open and found out that Pujols was out instead of clicking individually or running a recrunch, if I mm -hmm. could just click a button and do it. Thanks, right. Fantasy Cruncher. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right, let me look at FanDuel first for all the crazies. Um, let's see. Who would my favorite pitcher be in a single entry? Probably Trapiano. Because I think Armand will be the be super popular. I think Trapiano's price could help me out there. Let's see. Nope, I don't need to export that, Josh. <laughs> More coffee. Sanchez, Judge, Stanton, Bird, Dyson, and Ahmed, Panda, and Kinsler. Eh, close enough. A lot of uh, guys that I don't really want as one-off options, like Jared Dyson in the eight hole, for example. Yeah, it's gonna be tough to stack the Yankees on both sides with the expensive pitching. Like, I mean, on Fanduel, you could probably stack Herman with some Yankees pretty easily. 
just because it's 6,600, but it's not as easy to fit in the Yankees as it usually is. That one's fun, I think. Sanchez, Andahar, Stanton, and Bird. One off McCutcheon, and then uh, one off Nick Ahmed at shortstop, which is fine by me. Shortstop, mm-hmm. whatever. And then Kinsler and Upton would be nice. Yeah. Like that. All right, that's all I've got. Uh, hockey. Talk to me about hockey tonight. Yeah, there's a big tournament on DK if you're willing to spend $495. <laughs> Got to beat 167 other people, other entries. Um, 20K to first, which is nice. Uh, so I'll probably try to get in that. And then I've got the article out already. I'm just waiting on some news from Morning Skate. Uh, I just published the article. Just I'll update it if need be. I'm, we're expecting some lineup changes on Vegas' side. Uh, so players might be jumping around lines if that's the case. Then I'll update the article this afternoon. So should be fun. Uh, it's two one caps. If you guys haven't been paying attention, and uh, we got we got a really good tournament. So I'm excited to play this showdown slate. Uh, where's this game at today? It is in DC. Okay, uh, so they're up two one and with a home game to go three one. Yeah. Are they is is hockey two three two or two two one one one? I honestly I can't remember. I think it's two one one one. Let me check. Uh, I'm almost positive it's one one one. I think every sport is yeah. switched to that now. Here, well now you now you made me question it. Yeah, so it's back to to uh, Vegas after tonight. Okay. Interesting. I'll watch whenever it's an elimination game. <laughs> Could be it as early as Thursday. So no, that'll work. Um. Basketball, uh, you've probably got maybe three times left that you can play a single entry or a single game slate of basketball because I don't expect this to go much longer. Uh, Warriors just uh, put down a bludgeoning on the Cavs yesterday. It's just, uh, man, this series looks so much different if the Cavs actually win that first game. It's yeah, so I know. Crazy. This being one-one right now, even if this second game happens and the Warriors just whoop their ass, it looks so different at one-one. You're like, okay, they, you know, they still got a shot. Now it's just like, all right, just get the hell out of there. Let's get LeBron to Philly or Houston or LA or wherever he's gonna go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, check out the articles, spotlight hitters, pitchers, stacks. It's all on the website right now, I believe. I believe uh, so. Ownership projections and rankings will be up soon enough. And um, that's all we got. Uh, live stream tonight with Chris. I have a sneaky suspicion baseball is not going to be a giant priority of what we're talking about, but who knows where that show is going to go. Uh, because there's only so much you can talk about for four games. Um, actually, we'll probably get more into like the game theory perspective of it all on a day like today. So check that out. That's all I got. Anything else? No, good luck. Uh, don't go crazy on this slate and play some hockey. There you go. Play hockey. Later, people.